We got a one, a two, a three. Hey now, Metal Mike coming at you. It is Saturday. It is the 10th of January. We are rolling into 2015, and I'm doing a video for you right now. What does Saturday consist for me? Not that you give a damn, but I'm going to tell you. Taking care of the baby, the two-year-old, the infant, the, the not the infant, the young girl. Uh, I have my uh, other two children home. Obviously, it's Saturday. It's a weekend. There's no school. It's early morning right now. It's about 9:10, and I'm shooting a video. What am I gonna do? Shoot from the hip, always, right? And always improv. Totally nothing's planned. I thought, well, I'll shoot a quick video. I'll go up in the bedroom, shoot one, kick one out, and uh, we're gonna improv. We're gonna grab some items. We're gonna show them to you. I got a couple for sure I can show you, and you know I'm gonna always find one more. First off, let's start with this. Keep this right here on the dresser. What is this? This is a World War One bayonet fighting knife. It's got the knuckles on it, as you can see for punching. It also has this, the head knocker, if you'll notice, if you can see that, basically a quick, even with the helmet on, to tank. And of course this beautiful blade. Now eBay doesn't even allow the sale of these, sadly, yet some are still on there. The tip is broken off of this. I picked this up uh, on Craigslist. A few years ago now, I just always wanted one. It doesn't have a scabbard for it, sadly, but it's an original. 1917, tip broke off, but it would still work. And what does it do? Well, as you can see by the shape, it will puncture through a heavy tunic, wool tunic, World War I. I like to keep it by the bed if someone breaks in in the middle of the night. I'm not going to grab a gun. Sadly, I'm going to grab this. First, well, what's the second attempt? Well, what are we going to do next? Well, we don't need to worry about that, do we? We got to worry about this. World War One. Hey now, nice piece. I advise you guys get one. It's a nice collectible, good investment. I don't remember what I paid on this one. Maybe a hundred bucks. Bought it for myself for my private collection. Now, what else was I going to show you? I know that I had one more. Oh yeah, this old tin car. Right here. What's it marked? You get, that's what you got in the background there. You got the Sesame Street, so we're going gonna, gonna, to uh, try to talk over that. It looks like uh, it's got the name of a tire company on there. It looks like S-E-M-P-E-R-I-T Cord 31 by 4 This might have been a promo piece. Look at the engine on that with the little pistons. Gaskets, whatever, not gaskets, uh, 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 pistons. There we go. And there's actually a little motor inside here, and there is a man... He's laying down in there. I don't know if he actually goes with it. On the front, it's got, what, M-O-K-O? -O. Just a great piece. I picked this up for my private collection, retirement piece. Relic, rough, little wind-up piece right here. Does it work? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Here's a nice piece of chalkware that I like. Next to my old running fan that my autistic daughter uh, must have on at all times. Uh, this Venice, California chalkware piece. 1920s, early 1900s, Depression era even. With the holes in the shoes. Just love it. I identify with it. Who knows why. I guess I always identified with that. Here's a great bunch of pocketbooks. If you ever see these, this series, The Return of the Great Brain, actually quite valuable and they bring a good... Uh, they bring a good price, and I read them as a kid. They are just awesome. So we've got the couple great brains. Yes, I like children's books. These are great. Uh, the Freak Brothers. Grew up with my dad in the comic book store. I would read these and bring these home. as I would bring these to school in like the sixth grade, if you can believe it. Fat Freddy's Cat. Oh, I was in love with them. Love the Freak Brothers. Huge fan of the Freak, Bro Freak Brothers. Here's another little pocketbook. Had this as a kid or read it as a kid. I love it. That's why it's in the collection. Now here's a great little piece. Not little, big. It's a desk. I got this in a, in a basement in St. Paul of an old house that I got a, a simple walk up and knock on the door. Uh, it's a school desk. It's slanted. It's two. It's on an old desk base. It's early. That's for sure. 
and I just love it. I've had it for years now, and I keep it. My plan is to write a book from right here. So that's right, right here at this desk. I also have a comic book series that I've been working on. I've got a couple characters I've developed over the years, and I've actually pumped out quite a bit of them. They're sitting in my uh, inventory right now, so let's call it. Uh, and those are plans for the future. I'm going to have my own comic book. Maybe I'll even have a cartoon. Uh, that's called Metal Mike, <laughs> of course, right? And I have several other characters. Characters I have Larry the Loser, Stanley Satan, all characters I've developed. And there's my daughter. What is it, honey? I understand. I'll be right there, kiddo. You keep eating that corn dog, right? I'll come and get it in a minute here. So we're going to wrap it up, right? Video's over. Uh, we got plans to write that book. We're going to do a bio book. I'd like to write a couple of books, two, three, four books. That's how I'd like to spend my later years, drawing and writing, even typing. I want to get an old typewriter and actually hammer it out old school. Yep, those are some of the things that you envision. Those are things that we need to do. The comic books. Remember I always talk to you about doing one thing a day? One of my uh, viewers here on YouTube, got to give him a shout-out from Facebook, sent me a message. He's been listing stuff on eBay. All you did is bum me out because I have not. Uh, I need to. And you motivate me, and I'm always preaching it. One thing a day, two things a day. You're right. I've been slacking. Oh, I guess it's with Christmas and stuff. But it's the first month of the year. We've got to get rolling. We've got to get some of this junk out of this house. We've got to move it out, right? Why? Because there's going to be lots of dumpsters this summer. And there's going to be lots of really cool treasures that are going to be uncovered. And hopefully, uh, maybe even this winter, I'll find something. I just I got the itch. I can feel it, man. I can feel that I'm going to find something on the street corner. That's where I'm feeling it. Not in a sale. Street corner for free on the curb. The van? Ah, it's done. I've, I've tried to give it a jump three times. The weather's been so brutal. Uh, below zero, 30, 40 below a couple times this week. Almost 50 below hell with the wind chill. And uh, I've not even been able to get her to do a slight turnover. So something is draining it. I don't know. I've gotten a lot of responses. You know, I did know the one about pulling the, the, uh, the positive off the battery to test if it's your alternator. I've known that one for years. Love it. So that was good advice. Thanks, guys. I was on it, though. That's uh, one of the few things I do know. Uh, I bought a new battery this summer. Got lots of comments. Hey, man, I got a battery. Go get a battery, this and that. No, I bought a battery purposely to avoid this because this happened last year. I was having problems, and I just assumed it was the battery, but it must be something else because this is a brand-new battery. Bought this summer. I'm bummed. Yes, Lena? I'm coming, man. Almost coming, right? So the van's done. I'm going to go with, and this is it, we're going we're gonna to solidify it. We're going to cement it. Uh, a vehicle that can be used for the family, good on gas, small in size, won't eat up my driveway. I'm going to get the small transit. That's right, the small transit. I love them. Basically, these transits have taken over from the old Ford uh, van that was everyone was using from couriers to this to that. If you'll notice, everyone's driving one of these small transits right now. That's because Ford will kick out these vehicles like this that are just solid and will run for years. Good workers. I had one of those Ford vans. It was a demon. You couldn't have put a bullet in it to kill it. I regret selling it. Uh, so here we go. The van's done. As soon as the weather breaks a little bit, I'll try it one more frickin' time when we get up into the 30s. We'll give it a jump. If that don't work, then we know officially she's toast, and I'm going to start pulling stuff off of the van, emptying it out, and then I'm going to let it go, and that will put me in a position where I have no choice but to replace it. And my heart calls for an old pickup truck or an old car, but we're going to get the transit. Later on down the line, we'll get one of those old vehicles to uh, scratch that itch that I have for the old schoolness. All right, guys, full day of baby duty. Ex-wife's coming over to visit the kids. That's always pleasant. And uh, I'm going to bring a pizza, though. So I should be able to sneak one piece of pizza out of there for myself. And uh, that's it, kid duty, lockdown. Tomorrow i got to take my son bowling with his girlfriend. Another lockdown day. Monday, I hope to return in a, in a feverish pitch. Just brush my teeth. I hope I don't have freaking toothpaste all over my damn mouth 
looking like Dave Chappelle. <laughs> that would suck. But whatever. All right, guys. Looking out my window, I love this vision here. And this is where I want to do my comic. I've already done two. So it's not just talk. Remember, talking about something doesn't mean nothing. Everybody has ideas, right? Including me. Run my mouth. Sewage. Spewing forth. But they're ideas. It's what you can actually move on that counts in life. I heard that from Gene Simmons. Yep. Gonna hate me for quoting him, but uh, he's got good business sense. He does. As a matter of fact, I just purchased one of his books. And of course, I can't pluck it right here. Maybe I can. Here we go. Where is it? Hey now, where is it? Come on, Michael. I don't see it. Damn it. But what I can do is show you, I always talk about books. Now, a lot of the, the battle that we have with books, here's a stack of books that I have for study. Do I study them often? Not as much as I'd like to, but they're here. And I do look through them, and I do learn, and I love it. Uh, it's hard because you go into a bookstore and you're thinking, why the hell would I buy a book when all the information I need is online? That's not specifically true because you have to know something to do that search. You can stumble upon things by doing hours and hours and hours of search, learning a new title here, a new name of a, uh, a marking here, this and that. But I buy these books. Hey, Lena, I'll be right there, Baba. Hold on, I'm going to go take care of her. It's going to take me a second. What's the problem here? We having problems with the iPad? shut it down. That's how it goes with kids. As soon as they see that you're doing something, you're talking, you're trying to get something done, that's when they want your attention. And that's only fair. She deserves it. So we're gonna, we got her stalled there for a second. I'm going to finish this on the books. That's why I buy books like this. This price guide on tools from antique traders. I advise you pick it up. You'll be blown away by this. I've known this for years about tools. You see the guys at the flea market. They set them up. They oil them. They just simply uh, bring out the patina by oiling them, cleaning them up, putting them in a nice display case. Boy, there's some big money in here. One of the most expensive pieces I was stunned to find out sold for uh, in, in, in 2007 for 32900 the record for the highest tool that is, is sold at this point is 114400 Wow. Uh, today it is not uncommon for, uncommon for a tool to sell for more than $10,000. But this book is awesome. It shows every type of plane. This is huge. You go to these estate sales where these old men are having, they have all their old tools laid out. You don't know where to begin. Well, learning this, hopefully I can pick something up. Picker's Bible. I advise you get it. There are two versions of this. There's a first second edition I advise you pick up both of them these are loaded with tips how to move your inventory etc here's another decent one liquidating an estate this is basically for families how to sell an estate maybe for you how to get into the business of doing estate cleanouts etc whatever the case even if you're a picker even if you're a junker even if you're a dumpster diver there are tips in here that you can use and this one, Hot Wheels, 2nd edition, pocketbook companion, basically lists every damn Hot Wheel. I'm not a Hot Wheel guy. I freaking love them. I grew up on them. Yeah, I get it. If I'm looking at some, I know which ones to go after, the red lines. But honestly, do I know the value of each individual Hot Wheel? Oh, hell no. This is I have to study more. So these are books that I advise you pick up when I tell you to do something today, whether it's sell an item, list an item, read a book. If you can read a couple of chapters a day, it's going to benefit your mind. Uh, Marty, my stepdad as I call him, taught me a very valuable uh, lesson in this business. Most pickers, collectors, junkers, etc. tend to go for one field, whatever that passion may be. Whether it be oil paintings, glassware, 
military, and they pigeonhole themselves. And the baby's crying. Don't pigeonhole yourself. I'm out of here. Hey now, tears. Uh, hey now, snow. Cold weather, books. We're out.